Hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. Hello. What's crack a lacking? Uh, hold on. Let me just fucking get all my shit together. There we go. Hello. Welcome to the final dungeon discourse of the year. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's, it's happening. Uh, the final stream on this channel before I, I guess our our holiday schedule kicks in, where well, they're not really there's not really a schedule. There's just going to be like random sporadic content being done throughout the next few weeks, including one shots, uh, the, the occasional divinity stream if we happen to all be uh, available on a Monday. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, um, schedule for the holidays is chaotic neutral. Exactly. Yeah. The best way to keep in track or keep in touch with the things we do during our break is to join our Discord and follow us on Twitter. So, um, you know, do yep, that. Yep. Um, but yeah, we're here to discuss previous session, discuss some qu questions that I saw Katie submitted in the Discord. Very nice. Um, and play Jeopardy, which is going to be a fun one. Um, so far, if you play smart, very doable for both of you. Because the, 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 the I highest feel like this is points, Ethan's to lose. I think the highest amount of points to beat is 900, which is... <laughs> Two questions. Yes. Again, this is Ethan's to lose because he knows more canonic D&D stuff than I Ethan do for is, sure. E Ethan so. is a tough, tough con contender to go up against, yeah. Lord, I'll give you that. Ethan does know... I think out of all the people on... The cast, I think Ethan and Soko know the most of like canon D&D yeah. &D shit. My goal today is not to actually beat Ethan, it's just to have a positive score, just so I make, I'm in the in upper like, half of we the... We put you in like third place second. at least. Yeah, so that's all I want. So... I'm good. <laughs> to be fair, I have really good canon knowledge, but like when we get to like know your show and like my brain's just empty, I don't have memory. That's where I'm hoping to get points. That's, I'm hoping to make up for it in the know your show. Make up some ground, yeah. Please. So that's going to be fun. Um, and then in the discourse after our break, we'll have we'll try to have Soko on, and then uh, I guess Duke. For right now, it's Duke. Whoever has the lowest amount of points gets a chance to redeem themselves because of the fact that we played it with our guests, so that means we are at a odd amount of people. So one of you gets a, gets a redo, uh, and I decided we'll just do it. Whoever has the lowest amount of points, so that will for right now for right now with like minus twenty nine hundred or some shit is Duke or minus twenty six hundred, something along those lines. <laughs> That does mean you'll be against Soko, Duke, yeah. But you're not there to win, you're there to re to up your score. You're there to just do better. <laughs> right? Um, all right, so before we uh, continue, any announcements that we want to share with class? I know, Laura, you're running a one-shot during our break. Do you want to, yeah. I don't know, talk a little bit about that or something? Or... Sure. Um, it'll be January 10th, which is a Monday. Uh, I just printed off the, because I prefer the physical copy to the PDF, so I just printed it off today so I can spend the next few days Christmas while I have downtime actually reading through it. This one came with a map for the only area that needs a map, and that makes nice. me happy. Because the other one I ran didn't, and I was drawing really shitty-ass makeshift maps in my notebook. <laughs> um, I do wonder if I can scan it and ask James to make like cut it up and copies up so I can like show the players or show parts be... of the stream without okay. the legend where it shows all the things I as the DM know that I don't want the players to know yet. Would it be so... um Well I would it be too much of a spoiler if like I maybe do some maps for you where you'll think there'll be combat in uh the the the, the, the Tailspire? Or is that like a nah? Like, I don't know uh, anything about um, your one shots, but like- I, if, if I, that's a, if I get James to so basically there's, there's, I can give you the maps that just show you the space. You can make it and describe it. I just mm -hmm. need to take out, there's some symbols for like hidden, like this is here, or this creature might be here. And if I can just get James, if he has time to take those out or like just obscure those, then I could totally give it to you and you could make them in Tailspire for just the, the basic parts. Yeah, Cause there's an underground can... portion. Is and that's where the maps to do, come to, to, to like allow you access to my steam library and just i don't know fuck around with tailspire yourself i don't know i don't know is there Maybe, a way to do that but well there well yeah because james shared his steam library with me and so i think there's a limited number of times you can do it so if you later down the line you have more like cl fr closer friends or family you want to and you've used up one of your Available I've never, shares I've never on shared my Steam library with then. anyone, so like if that's a thing we can yeah. do, then maybe you can. I yeah, know, I can send you the instructions for it then. And yeah. Do some shit. I don't know uh, if you want to. Like uh, I can try cool. to make that happen. Cool. So yeah, January tenth, and I think 
January 2nd is when Koiba's running Koiba's. his Battle yeah. Royale one shot, scuffed Battle Royale one shot, as he's <laughs> uh, putting it with uh, a lot of homies. I know, funnily enough, Laura's one shot is like, Laura is the only non-Dutch speaker. <laughs> I know! So, like, if ever, if y'all wanted to just conspire against me, literally everyone in the group yeah. could just speak Dutch, and I'll be like, you know what? Well, I'm just gonna make so things happen. Already, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's Gmail, who's Belgian, it's me, it's Opti, it's Shatter, Natty. and it's Natty, right? Yeah. So that's, yeah. we all speak Dutch. So we've decided that from now on, all of our characters speak primordial or some shit, and we can communicate with and each other Dutch. in Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Laura, you're learning German, so you're halfway there. <laughs> you say okay. that, but there's de it's definitely like when they were sure. when they were spitting Dutch in the the Discord chat we made. I was getting very little of it with what German I have. So, so like like people always say, oh, German and Dutch basically same thing. Uh, until you start to learn one oh. of the language, and you, you'll realize, oh no, there are very different. I can teach you sandwich and Netherlands. Oh good, oh good. That's Bo all Tom. I need. <laughs> Bo Tom. Bo Tom. Yeah, the, the gist of the, the one shot I'm running, the story is you're in this town called Rail, I think W-R-A-L-E. I can't remember the top of my head, but you're in a town celebrating their annual like winter solstice night festival. Like not so much like Christmassy holiday, but like as in like longest night of the year solstice like theme. Mm -hmm. And you're there for a good time, but then you notice one of your friends who was like, he's there a second ago. It just disappears, just goes missing, and you start asking around, and you realize this is your friend is not the only one, and you try and solve the disappearances on the night of the festival. Low, 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 is the low, very low brief bit of TLDR fucking detective yep. RP. Let's go. I'm here for it. I need to. I still need to make a character for that shit. I have no idea what I'm. Yeah, it's only level it. three, so it's not a super like it's not as detailed. I still character. Need to make a character for like one shot as well. I've dude, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm debating. Yeah, I, need I wonder to do if that. I can reuse for Koiba's one shot just because of time. Because Soko ran a battle royale one shot ages ago, and I wonder if I I want to reuse that character because Sassy did that character fucking dirty, and oh, she really? should have survived way longer than she should have. Oh, Some no. really she, two clutch vampiric touches where she rolled like max damage almost. Yeah, fucked. Like That's just fucked. fucking yeah, wiped me out. It. Vampiric touch and... is a fucking nasty spell, dude. And she was upcasting it. She cast it like a few slots higher than its base, mm. and then rolled like max, and I was just gone. <laughs> just yeah, that'll, wiped that'll off do it. Her. That'll do it. Um, but yeah, we're here to discuss everything and every uh, anything and everything Dungeon Select. You know, the show about the show, as they say. Um, last session was session <clears throat> eighteen. Yes, seventeen. Uh, I think. No, eighteen. 17. I think 18. Was it 17? Well, 17 in the title, Dad. Yeah, yeah because the we missed one episode of Discourse, therefore. Oh, we... it's Discourse Dis yeah. 17, but it's... Oh, yes. I see, I see. I think that's... Uh, because we did one where we discussed two episodes together because we missed a week, and that's why Discourse is now... Yeah, 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 yeah. Campaign, I see, I see, I see. Um, I hate that so much. Yeah, I mean... It's what it is. It is. Um... Which I titled Family Drama, because it seemed pretty fucking appropriate. appropriate yeah, even and was... I were discussing what the title, because not only there's layers, because not only is there the inter-party drama, mm -hmm. then there's the whole, oh, my patron's also my grandfather yes. family drama, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's there's layers. <laughs> there's layers to that, so I figured that would be a good title. Um, you had to date to yourselves. You just, you know, saved Streatham from uh, the clutches of an evil cult that was worshipping a variety of draconic deities, just setting shit on fire, burning entire settlements down to please the dragons, uh, led by a, 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 a man uh, who struck a deal with a shadow demon uh, and did all, conducted all kinds of experiments on Dragonborn to try and see if he could infuse himself with draconian powers. Um, oh. But you put a stop to that. Very good. Very good. And you basically have to date to yourselves to kind of take your time to prepare and rest and, and kind of make uh, think of what you want to do next. And basically just had a day off, essentially. You, you had a session off to kind of fuck around and, and deal with some shit. Um, Jax spent some time with his uh, dragon egg, um, made some banging new gloves. Infuse or didn't make new gloves, but infuse his gloves with uh, some 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 draconic properties, I guess. Um, Kess went on an adventure of self-discovery and realized that her pal Blue was not only her pal but also uh, related to her. 
Um, there's this drama between between Kess and Daigen. Uh, there's a bunch of different things uh, that that came up, and we're gonna we're gonna unpack it all a little bit. But first, before we do that, uh, what are your guys' overall thoughts on that session? And are you happy with the things you know you've done? And just uh, yeah, just talk to me about your your thoughts and opinions of that session in in general. Uh, we'll start with Laura. Uh, I personally love the downtime sessions, like the. The RP stuff, it, I enjoy more than combat. Like, I have to try harder not to zone out during combat. Like, early stages, I get very bad about the whole, oh, it's not my turn, easily distracted. And then my turn happens, and I'm like, wait, who who went down? Where? Who moved where? And it was, and it's rough, and I'm getting better <laughs> about that. Um, but whereas the RP, I'm just, like, super into, because it's just different. Like, combat's kind of, there's still storytelling in combat, don't get me wrong. Like, when who gets people up, how you are interacting with stuff, sure. But it's more kind of one kind of note. It's one sort of, like, mood, one sort of emotion. Whereas, of course, RP, you'll have the, the funny, the sad, the heartwarming, the, like, annoying, the all the things in between. So I just, I like it better. So episodes like last week's, or, yeah, just my thing. Love it. Hell yeah. Ethan? Yeah, I mean, like, I love D&D &D combat, right? I think it's great. I think it's really satisfying when you pull it off well. Uh, you know, it appeals to that sort of puzzle-solving element of me. <clears throat> but RP sessions, especially ones where it's just downtime and you just, there's your day, do what you want. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> what I play D&D for, because that's when you, you know, running through the quests and getting shit done is when you start getting these attachments to these people and then that downtime is when you can explore that when you can you know find out things about these people and make those connections and oh these aren't just people that i wander around yeah you know doing shit with this is you know like so and so likes such and such drinks so and so has a phobia of spiders so and so that's the stuff that i find really interesting and those yeah. sort of like little interactions here and there so having a session where it's just yeah do what you want and i got you know, I got especially lucky in this session because I had another player come over to me and be like, hey, hey, take that person and tell them to fuck off and go do something with them. So I got to be chaotic as shit and go fucking <laughs> pretty much, pretty rob pretty much. some magic items yep. with Kess, which is great because Brooks <laughs> likes spending time with Kess. Yep. And, and it's I got also to do like, some chaotic shit. Like, technically, a lot of that stuff would also happen in the traveling part when we're still doing quests, but it's hard. To sort out time for that because like you when when you have that like objective all both players and dm i'm sure it's more like we just want to we want to go we want to get it done you don't want to it almost feels like it's a lot harder to remind yourself to allow room for rp even though there is room mm -hmm. still when you are doing those things so yeah it's nice when you play don't out. have anything and it's like all you can do is relationship build and storytell and rp with each other you know, if you're traveling somewhere, you don't role play out every conversation in the car. You just assume that they happen. Yeah. Whereas when you sat around for a day doing nothing, you have those conversations. Exactly. Yeah, I think my thoughts on, because um, as a DM, you know, I have to prep a lot for sessions that I know you're on, like quests and shits. When it's like uh, qu sessions like last week's, I prep fairly little because I have the. I, I knew you were in Streatham. Cool. I've had that You've city already made. Yeah. I knew. I know the people there. I know the the, the things you can run into there. Um, I knew what was going to happen if certain things had happened. So, like for instance, uh, you know, the city basically just selling off all the items from the magic shop that were left behind. I was like, okay, if the magic shop gets destroyed as a result of whatever the fuck happens, this, you know, I had all of that like semi prepared. Yeah. So giving you guys kind of the reins on, like, you have a day off, fucking go nuts. Um, makes it so that I have to prepare fairly little, which was good, because I had a very big stream the day before, so I had uh, didn't, I, I was tired. Yeah. Um, but um, unexpectedly, I had to roleplay a lot, because obviously I had to play as Jax, which was a thing. And yeah. Um, How does also... it feel to know that the whole party likes your Jax better than Soko's Jax? <laughs> <laughs> dude, even Soko, Soko. Likes, even Soko likes my Jax better than his I know, Jax. even Soko is like, dude, I like you, can dude, you just it's play my character? about just playing this, like, frazzled, like, old man is just fucking funny, dude. It's fucking funny, it's great. It's, it's one of those characters <laughs> where you can do whatever the fuck you want, because he's an old man, and... 
yeah, obviously I took notes from like how Soko has portrayed him, and you know, it seemed very like on brand. For instance, Daigon like asked, uh, well, I say asked, you know, wrote down some questions for for Jax about like whatever the fuck he was doing, him yeah. to get like to like light up and get that spark of like wanting to over-explain everything, and then halfway through kind of realizing, oh wait, this doesn't mean anything to her, and then kind of calming himself down. But that initial excitement, stuff like that, are things that I noticed Soko does, and I wanted to make sure that I did that as well. Um, but I hope I did a good job at, at portraying Jax as, so. as, as faithful as possible. Um, yeah, I had to play Jax, uh, who had a lot of shit to do as well, so I had to do that. And then I didn't intend on Kess finding out about Blue that session, but she... Okay, the way it happened was, because you guys were deafened for that, but the way yeah, it we happened was... Um, she basically went to Blue and was like, you know, about lying, and, and Blue was like, eh, it's alright, and then kind of, I realized, wait, Blue is lying himself right now, and I feel yep. like this, he probably, you know, at this point, I decided that Blue would be like, okay, I cannot give her, like, a pep talk about lying and shit when I'm lying through yeah. my fucking teeth <laughs> to this girl. So True. I was like, okay, fuck it. Um, here it is. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, Kess doesn't know her, 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 um, doesn't know as much about her origin as she would like to, and then, fucking, I got a bunch of questions about that, and, so I had to roleplay my ass off that I didn't expect, but hey, it happened, and I feel like it, I've been alright, <laughs> so, you know, whatever, um, but it was good, I really enjoyed that session, uh, it was, normally, when I give you guys control, there's some roleplay, but I feel like sessions like that, like 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 past Sunday, um, are rare because I feel like every character went through some po some sort of like significant character development over the last two sessions. Uh, we've had Davian and and Brooks kind of both experiencing this whole Kasuth thing and realizing oh Kasuth is very real, uh, and Davian obviously channeling his first bit of like oh shit i can i just eldritch blasted i don't know how i did it and i don't yeah. know how to do it again but i fucking did something um brooks kind of realizing um you know the, the, talking about uh some stuff with kes uh regarding his past a little bit uh, a certain individual uh but also Being very vague very vague but enough <laughs> to the point you know enough to the point there is that okay there is some shit there uh, and uh, obviously, like experiencing this whole outer body experience that he had with Davi on the roof uh, when Kasuth kind of appeared to them, um, you know, obviously Daigon and Kes went through a bit of a spat, uh, and and Daigon and Jax also, like you know, Daigon told Jax some shit, uh, you know, that she would or would not have done if certain situations arose, uh, which definitely showed that she's definitely growing closer to Jax. Uh, obviously, Jax went through a lot. Um, with this whole dragon egg, drag, dragon egg debacle, um, and then Kess, you know, realizing that Blue is also her granddad, who is like this epic war hero of the elemental plane of air, um, which is pretty fucking a pretty fucking big deal. Elasrin, <laughs> um, I feel like has gone through the least. But then mm -hmm. again, a few sessions before, this whole revelation happened of, like, you know, this fucking spider web the or tattoo order thing. thing. Yeah. So, like, everyone has definitely had some, like, revel rev revelations done about themselves throughout the past, like, handful of sessions, which is dope. Because that means that, um, yeah, there's a fuckload of shit that everybody has going on, and it's kind of all surfacing now for some more, some stuff more so than others, but... It's definitely become clear that everybody in the party has more going on than just, oh, I travel this continent, haha, ha, I do quests, hee hee, I'm a mercenary. You know, they're actual people with actual pasts, and it's kind of become clear now that everybody definitely has some shit that they want to pursue, and... Um, yeah, it's exciting, and I'm very excited about the next, like, story arc, which is definitely all gonna be about this this final tier of Kosuth and concluding that business for Davian. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. In terms of mercenary shit, Brooks doesn't have any skeletons in the closet yeah, whatsoever. Dude. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, you say that? I, t I have so many plans for Brooks. I fucking... Do you know the worst part? I have part? so many plans for Brooks. The worst part is that <laughs> Brooks, as far as Brooks is concerned, 
he's on a different continent. None of that shit's ever going to come back to bite him. Yeah. You know, that's never going to be a problem. And I'm sitting like, I know Dutch. Dutch has pulled out <laughs> all these little things that I wrote, and he's taken these words, and he's just sharpened them, and in the end, you're he's gonna just You're going to get a letter you one day from your ex yep. uh, about your dad or some shit. <laughs> you know I what I wanted your to dad, be? I banged your brother. No, Go fuck I wanted to be like, did you ever watch the narrative telephone that Critical Role did? Uh, some episodes, did, yeah. Okay, do you, well, if you haven't watched this one, watch the one that, um, uh, uh, the one who played Opal. Is it Amy? Amy Carrero, I think her name is. I think so, yeah. Amy, watch the one she did. It was like a magical breakup letter to <laughs> her ex and her, and, and her character. And it was so funny. And I just picture that level of like, her the whole mood she had in that breakup message which is like a magical video like a one-way kind of video call she had someone do next i feel like that's what brooks is gonna get one day and i would die it would be so good fucking his ex is gonna learn how to astral project just so that she can like yeah app apparate in front of brooks and the entire Listen, party and just like, and just fucking, like oh. <laughs> fuck you nah, fucked I up you did this worry. i have fucking plans absolutely oh. but for inspiration dutch watch specifically that there <laughs> Also, watching Matt and Ashley have to just do what she did was great. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, we have some questions that we're questions? just going to go through. For us? First one is for everyone. Uh, so both of you, and I guess me as well. Hi, hello. I'm also a person. Uh, our thoughts and opinions on the current spat between Daigon and Kiss. I'll start oh, with Ethan. Sake. Right. I'm not going to talk about what happened in the post-DS call, because I have hunches <laughs> based on... Laura and Belle's reaction and the way they laughed at certain things. So I'm not going to go into that because I don't want to spoil it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll go into Blood Well, you Brooks say spoil well. it. The part that was deafened for you, yeah, chat, chat knows. Here. But chat then, again, knows. then again, there are some some, some cast members in, ch in chat, right? So yeah, I, I guess. guess. Yeah. And on top of that, you know what? Like, I might be wrong. You guys might be playing the 300 IQ like layers on layers. You're fucking with me out of character True. to fuck with me in character. True, you don't know. But um, <laughs> like I'll go. Like I think it's great IP, and I think it's really nice because it's given Daigon this reason to separate out from Kess a little. Yeah. Which out of like, don't get me wrong. I'm not happy that they're pissed off with each other. But I'm happy that there's that separation because it's really nice to see Daigon be able to have more of a roleplay experience with everyone else. You know? Um, and Brooks, like... Oh, Bro Brooks was in a really weird position over it. Mm -hmm. Because he was in two <laughs> minds. He was like, do I let this play out knowing that Kess is going to be stupid? <laughs> because it means that I get more of a chance to make these people... My friends. And the thing about that is, sorry for like interjecting, but like the thing about that is, it's not necessarily that Kess is stupid, but it's okay, just Kess is she, stupid. She but... like just has no like not social used to awareness. She has no idea that she's yeah. being stupid. You know what I mean? Like it's not necessarily her being dumb or stupid. It's just her not being used to this People. level of like socializing and how yeah. these relationships work because she's never had to deal with them that way. She came from a very like transactional uh, community where it's like, okay, uh, this guy was nice to me, so I have to be nice back. That's how that works. Oh, this guy gave me a secret. I'll tell him a secret about me. This very, it's all very transactional to the point to now where it's like, you know, you're with actual people. It's just a completely different way of I, communicating. Yeah, it, much it's, like. Go ahead, Ethan. It's it's not that I know out of character that Kess isn't stupid. Mm -hmm. Brooks thinks she's a fucking moron. Oh, absolutely fair. <laughs> like Brooks is like, she's book smart. Don't let her ever talk to anyone. <laughs> yep. The thing about the whole thing too, though, is like the part um, where they weren't deafened and like Kess in her apology did try and say that. It's like, I, again, I have no social awareness because of it, but the way she didn't say that, she didn't take ownership of, cause that's kind of like the apology would have gone even better if she just said like, I am bad at this. Like I am terrible. This is a skill I don't possess. And without trying to justify it. Cause like we've traveled together for over a year and a half, Daigon knows this. It's not like I'm completely all of a sudden realizing that Kess has no social awareness. That mm -hmm. would have been made clear before now. I know that. And it's also why it's like, I get that and I can accept that part, but I don't like that she's trying to find excuses for it. And I think now it's like, we've been together long enough. 
I think it's time you need to step away from that and just to accept that <clears throat> it's just a part about you, a part that you can learn and a part that will grow over time, but accept that it's because of you and not because of anything else. Because the reason she gave, like, oh, I never had real relationships. Like, hey, neither did I. Oh, I never had anyone, like, show me kindness without something being behind it. Hi, I never had anyone show me kindness, period. So, and yet I still understand, like, some basic <laughs> rules of trust and stuff like that, right? So... <laughs> Both Laura and Daigen were like, that. that's where the apology basically fell flat. So it's still like, I accepted parts of it, but I I, I kind of wanted, I was like, Daigen was hoping for Kess to kind of skip that part. Just like, like say, the... I'm really bad at the social, I'm working on it, I'm really sorry, that would have been fine. Something my Better mother than taught me when I was a wee lad was, if your apology ends with a but don't bother apologizing exactly yeah exactly. it's like it's like if Kessa turned around and been like i'm sorry that you're upset no i'm sorry for what i did i'm yeah. sorry you're, you know it's which again like is Kess really used to apologizing to people you know probably yeah. not yeah and also like all the stuff that daigan said that was all still kind of like pretty pretty savage like a bit of some hits below the belt talking about it, but it's because they were true like the whole well if you never trusted anyone like you think you're sorry you don't have friends and i don't mean that as in like you don't have friends and i'm because i'm not it's like no i just mean the truth is you need to learn this because that's part of what is in the definition of friendship like that's part of the the deal and mm -hmm. things like that and it's all in the long term just to help because i know that kes needs to learn these things because she doesn't know them and that's fine and this is Digan's the whole like love with a velvet boxing glove just like savage but i, I do it for good reasons and it'll help you in the long run kind of thing yeah, it's if I don't give you this like wake up now, mm -hmm. it's gonna be worse down the road. So I'm gonna be yeah a bit mean and <laughs> clearly trying to like sugarcoat things or talk through innuendo and hope she'll pick up. But it's like no, clearly the point is she's like I don't get any of the social cues. So it's like okay, I'll just spell them out for you. Do you reckon it hits a little <laughs> harder for Daigon given her past and the fact that like you've described her as a moody teenager before, where like she's not used to having this person and now she has and she's put so much trust in them and then to not have that reciprocated feels even yeah. worse yeah and it's also worse because like the last line in that journal entry was i wish it changed anything because it's also just like she's extra moody about the whole thing because she knows you know what she also started to realize kes could treat me like garbage and i would still be here because i'm a that desperate and b i cannot communicate with a lot of the world's without and like the yeah okay i can write things down in my journal again but the practicality and like the tired the tiresomeness of that that's not a word but you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like having to do that all the time and it's still even though you can communicate that way it's still very much a separating feeling it's still kind of isolating because you have to do this thing that you have to do all these extra steps that no one else has to do and those extra steps sometimes it could be I'm also very aware of like the time they have to wait for me to write an answer and then show it to them as opposed to the time it would take to have a normal conversation. That could get really frustrating. That could get tiring. They could be like, fuck this. I'm going to go talk to someone I can talk to normally, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know what? I have to just accept that my best friend may not know what a best friend is because I don't have many options. And I now, and even though now it's like I have other potential friends, but I still need like she's still a more exponential way to connect with them than trying to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And that, and so it's like, that also makes Di get a bit pissed off because it's the reality to her situation. It's no one's fault, but it's still f fucking irritating and it's not going to put me in a good mood. So yeah, that's, yeah, fair. that's you, fair. You, as far as Daigon sees, she needs Kess. Yep. Even though Kess can be not awful, but Kess can be very um, stonewalling. Yeah, you know, there and it's also the... where she's been very emotionally unavailable to Daigon. Yeah, and even then, it's like if this all goes sideways and we go our separate ways, because also it's basically now it's been the I've been I've done the completely alone thing before, and as easier as it was in some ways, the reality of the situation is I can't handle it. I like Daigon sometimes wishes she was that I could go be a hermit and live on my own until the end of my days and just be happy about it. But she can't. Oh, I can't She's a social wait, creature. Dude, so. Because the because of Kess playing uh, a warlock, you know, the genie warlock, there gets to be a point where you guys are able to enter the vessel with her. 
cool. Uh, and like basically use that as like a think of it as like a kind of the same secret way clubhouse, magnific magnificent mansion works, where you just have like these yeah. little pockets and you can chill and it's fine and it's a vibe. Um, and y'all will be able like y'all meet Blue, and the way he is as a character, it's gonna explain so much about casting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. It's good. Uh, <laughs> because when I, I made you, know what? I, was like, I really studied like Kess's personality and, and, and Kess's like the, the story that I got from Belle. I was like, okay. Because I knew, I was like, okay, I'm going to make her patron. I didn't know grandfather, but I knew I was going to make her patron some kind of. Because the way Heritage. she met her patron, which is also told, is like she got in trouble and this patron just suddenly was there to help her out. I was like, okay. There's going to be some family relation there because it makes sense for. Yeah. That you know them to keep an eye on you without necessarily revealing themselves if they you know if they are genie or whatever the fuck, um, and I was like okay, cool, uh, and then I I was like okay so this is Kess is very bubbly very doesn't really emotionally attach to people like that uh, and if she does doesn't know how to handle it and I was like okay, cool, uh, now so does Blue, <laughs> so I feel um, like when we as a group meet Blue. A lot of us, especially Brooks, are, like he's either gonna love Brooks or he's gonna fucking hate him, and I feel like that's gonna be really fun. Um, I think they're gonna try and like out dickhead each other, <laughs> <laughs> which could go either way. To be honest, uh, I can see them sat like everyone else is trying to do something important, and Brooks is like, "Hang on, I'm playing cards with Blue, and I need to win." <laughs> Playing cards with this fucking like war hero. Give me a second, guys. <laughs> yeah. Who's also insane, an insanely powerful gin. Oh yeah. Just, just yeah. And I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna pull like, out. I beat, I beat so and so at cards. Now they broke I'm just gonna pull out my mark cards, fair, dude. Yeah. There you go. Pull out my fucking mark cards, and he's like, Yeah. Now your cards don't have anything on them. Get fucked, idiot. You think a gin out of all creatures won't fucking see through you cheating, motherfucker? I know that. <laughs> Brooks doesn't know what the fuck a gin is, yeah, other enough, than like enough. childhood stories. Fair yeah. enough, fair enough. Fair you know, enough, my, my image of Brooks's knowledge of mythology is very much like um like like he's gonna Celtic have his own fucking Gaelic deck of mythology fucking fake cards, dude. What do you think? Uh, what do you think this is? <laughs> we're gonna have to get someone else to bring a deck of Wait, cards. We both have a royal are... flush? How's that possible? <laughs> we all Six have aces. Deck of cards. Oh fuck. It's gonna be fun. Who who's got why have you got the Queen of Hearts when I've got three? What do you mean you've got three Queens of Hearts? There's only one in the deck. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Um, what oh, do you think is going to happen with Davian? Ooh. Mm. <sighs> Want to go first, Laura, after not so talking? Sure. I mean, it's very... Like, Davian's still very kind of confused and like i'm just doing these things with the tears of like groups doing it they don't seem too scary a threat and even the volcano thing it's very the more the greg's first i was like hey we're just gonna go down to this like lake invade someone else's home probably kill a bunch of them to get this thing i want but then he mentioned oh but no wait this thing was stolen from someone put there they're probably not like it got more complicated and it's like oh there's a chance that this isn't just straight up bad as it sounds but again it's not like like, Daigon's lawful, she's not necessarily like, a moral paragon, but she also doesn't like to just hurt innocents. Um, as hopefully most people wouldn't. And it's more just like, hasn't really thought about it much, to be honest, because there's always been like more pressing things in the interim and at the, the front of her mind, and that's kind of something it's like, oh, I'll deal with that later when we mm -hmm. get to it. Also doesn't really understand it. Like anything like magic and these elementals, like even when Kess would talk about it, it's kind of where the like smile nod because magic's not a thing. That just because like even her astral abilities, her it's not magic, it's manipulating the like the, the key, like the energy that is already just in people's bodies. It's not magic, it's like kind of something different, you know? Yeah, so well, it isn't it isn't at the same time, you know what I mean? Like I know. it's 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 I mean the way she sees like it, it's not magic. Area. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, an extension of your body. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. She hasn't put much thought into it. And as for out of character, again, I just feel like it's just a really great opportunity to do some multi-classing and it's just like going to get the tears probably like do something cool with them. It'll be a cool magic item and a power up that he gets to keep. I wonder if there's a certain organization that might get involved if all the tears are assembled. I don't know if that would put it on their radar and if they would deem it too dangerous. 
and they decide it needed to be removed, and then that could be a problem. <laughs> but I don't know. I wonder what organization she's talking about. Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, obviously, it's no secret that um, from the beginning, Duke was like, okay, I have this character idea, but I want it to be multi-class. So this is just... This is, the, this is how you're me, making it Because he wanted to multi-class early on. Uh, in the campaign, and this is just me yeah. presenting him with the opportunity to do that okay. uh, in a way that makes cool. sense, roleplay-wise, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, Ethan. Um, I mean, I, I, you know, I think in terms of what's going to happen to Davian, it's you know, it's simple. We go there, we get the job done, we get the thing. He becomes a warlock, a ranger yeah. lock, a ranger, yeah, lock. ranger lock. <laughs> Mechanic, mechanically, mm -hmm. in terms of Davian as a character and as a person I'm really interested to see the impact this has on him because at no point has he really struck me as a power hungry character and then on top of that seeing Davian try to justify the potential of killing all these people that are in essence just following the you know the, it's the, the task set out yeah, well, they're, they're doing the exact same as he is. You know, yeah. big scary elemental man told us to do things, so we're doing things. Yeah. You know? So, <laughs> the possibility of us finding, like, <clears throat> like, the flip side to that, finding, like, a, a Triton that's also looking to unite the gems and is, like, Davian's opposite, I think is going to be really interesting to see how he as a character develops from this and how he sort of justifies it because he's you know he's not a, an evil character he's not excited at the prospect of potentially killing all these people yeah because for the sake of um ease i've implemented the first two tiers in the storylines you were already going to follow anyway to kind of not have duke wait forever for the chance to mm -hmm. multi-class because i know he wanted to do that at an early stage um so the first two were really just like, oh, by the way, these bad guys happen to also have a tier, lol, dab. Um, this third one, I was like, this is the last one. I definitely want this to be like its own thing and not be as straightforward. So like the idea of like, we don't know anything about these people, these Triton, are they good? Are they bad? What if they're bad? What if they're good? And really kind of approach it in a way, in, in a different way than, than you've approached the, the first two. Because right, the, you went in the first two knowing, okay, Big lair, evil Yuan Ti with Hydra. Also have tier that makes powerful. Kill, take tier, good, sorted. Second tier, oh, big lair, evil cult, setting shit on fire, bad, kill, take tier, good, sick. That's two. This one, it's not that simple. And I wanted to really see how you as a group, but mainly Davian, would approach. A, would approach the unknown not knowing what you're going to encounter once you get to the lake, having to really, like, study and learn about the people that are protecting slash, you know, living in that lake. Um, and also, um, okay, you figured out whether these people are good or bad, then what? How are you going to approach this? Uh, and I think it's going to be really interesting and possibly uh, a pretty lengthy process as well, depending on uh, the stuff you do. But um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun arc storyline, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be, it's gonna be mm -hmm. dope. Um, beep, boop, beep, boop. <clears throat> oh, this is a good one. How do you feel Sai slash Vincent has affected the party? Ooh. Um. Uh. Like, aside from, obviously, excited to, like, anytime Dagen can consider making someone a new friend, it's still a rare enough thing, so it's just very exciting. Literally, probably one of the highlights of her life at this point. Um, but also, I really just liked, there was one really difficult moment, it's like I said earlier, how there can still be storytelling in combat. And there was one moment where it was like, Sai and Jax, I think, were down, and normally I'd be like, Jax is like budding friend and party and like main cast member. Go get them up. But like at that point, we knew like Malik was out and we knew like Sai had made no secret. He told us about it. It was very much like a, this is his whole 
like raison d'etre right now. And Dagon's like, I would be really upset if I was denied a chance at that kind of like resolution or, or justice or something. Like, so I had to make, and in that moment, I chose to get uh, Psy back up instead of Jax, risking that there's a chance Jax dies, especially harder because she's like, I owe Jax a life debt that I haven't repaid mm-hmm. yet. Um, so, like, that whole inner moral dilemma. And then it was great because Psy got the killing blow on his baddie, and it was just like great. Every, like, story it worked, it moments. Out, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'd say I really liked some of the moments like that that it brought. And yeah, just good, good times. I, I, I don't think I can't think of how, if there's any like monumental like impact overall on like party relationships one way or the other, good or bad, that Psy had. But oh, it's hard to say. But you definitely made a friend. You know? And he liked my drawing. He did. <laughs> I mean, Brooks would be dead if I wasn't here, so... You know. True, true, true. <laughs> yeah, like... Yeah. I am... I think the party are early enough to not be set in their ways to the point where there wasn't a monumental shift in dynamic or anything for having Sai there. Mm-hmm. But I also really enjoyed it at the same time. You know, it's it's always nice to have a guest on. It's always nice to have a guest, especially someone that you know and like. And then Sai as a character is just really fun because, like, to Brooks's mind, we're all, you know, we've all got goals, but we're sort of just meandering our way to them. And mm-hmm. then someone turns up that's, like, really driven. And they're like, look, I've been hunting this thing for, like, my entire life. And I think for a lot of the party, that gives some level of perspective to what they're doing yeah, you know I can the see concept that. that like people are setting out like for their entire lives to do shit and we're just here like yeah let's get fucking living, wasting living one day at a time yeah like we really are <laughs> yeah, we have no long-term plans you know we're as a group we're not even sure if we're gonna stay together you know we all like each other but nobody wants to commit to anything mm-hmm. you know you've got a group of what is essentially six chaotic idiots with commitment issues yeah <laughs> yeah 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 it's fair it's fair yeah i think um sai or vincent being the first guest of the campaign has definitely set like set a good bar if uh, vincent's definitely uh was a very fun guest uh to 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 have um because he knows how to role play i've met him in a role-playing environment so i knew he would bring it to characters to the table that had depth and it had personality and, and 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 that sort of thing and uh I, just, I don't know i just really enjoyed having him there and I, we're definitely gonna see him again like we're definitely like this malik business is not done yet and yeah who better to call than the group that helped him face malik the first time when it's time for round two you know um this is a fun one what's been your favorite moment of the campaign so far Ooh. Uh, I kind of really like the whole dragon egg. Like, it's not really a moment, but, like, the whole ongoing thing. Because, like, finding it initially, just the initial burst of quick chaos, like, what are you doing? Destroy it! Doing ah! And everyone just, like, arguing about it was kind of funny. And then the action since then, because it's going to bring out some great RP, of course, with, like, Blue and Kess and the whole dragon egg in the... Bring the dragon to the elemental was a very smart move. Not at all, you know, upsetting. Um, yeah, that wasn't. And uh, then yeah, no, mm. the whole Jacks making something out of it, and then the conversations that Dagon and Jacks could then have because of that. I I really like that. I mean, like for a specific, I guess, moment, the last episode of there's the the arguing and the the petty like like sisters fighting bullshit that me and Kess are doing. She only so it's fun to play, but then watching the party just be like, oh my god, and being like the irritated so siblings funny. or mom and dad being like, fucking, do I have to separate Especially <laughs> Davian just being like, oh, I'm Davian not is I'm so not bad. Doing this. <laughs> like, it's so I good. can't be fucked with this. <laughs> this was so fucking good, dude. So I think that's probably yeah. I'd say my favorite like specific like moment. Moment, moment is Davian's reaction to the fight, Spe- specifically just me giving Kess the nastiest m- wa- milky tea ever. Too. <laughs> also, the gesture so too wasn't even petty. like we got into a fight, we fist fights. Like I just gave you tea with more milk than tea, and that was enough to just like Davian just went off. <laughs> it it, so yeah, funny. but you have to remember that Davian is played by Duke, and Duke's British. <laughs> 
And you know, that's a cardinal sin over yeah. here. I also, I love Brooks trying to be like, maybe that's just how Kess likes her tea. And I specifically pointed out, I know she likes it black. This is so it's extra insult. Not just that I made it bad for anyone. <clears throat> I made it specifically bad for her. <laughs> oh yeah, Br Brooks was at that point just trying to like, <laughs> please don't fight Mama. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think my favorite moment of the campaign so far was the end of watch that Brooks did with Kess after all of the shit with the journal had come out. Mm -hmm. And he's just sat there and he's like, look. Like, really candid and open for Brooks, which is very rare. Where he just has this moment of like, look, I get it. And I'm not upset with you anymore. I'm just disappointed. Not even disappointed, <laughs> but like, you've burnt that that trust that started there like so you got to take now it's gonna take more time to build back up again yeah like starting from scratch it was, for a character that i've played as very um very chaotic and very casual and very you know i can't think of the right way to put it but very not serious right yeah. Even though he's not constantly playing jokes all the time, he just doesn't take things seriously. He's he's flippant. He's very yeah. like nonchalant and flippant he's about things. He's like, nonchalant about everything. Really... So for him to sit and have a serious moment with the character, like it felt really like like I messaged Bell after and I was like, What the fuck? <laughs> like that was such a good What like, did you do? <laughs> yeah, like it it was really fun to play through that, especially because it I, I'm really, like, trying to hold off on spilling too many secrets because I really feel like Brooks isn't the person, but, like, I also mm. want everyone to know. So I'm just, like, <laughs> dropping these little hints here and there, like, oh, I'll slip in a little bit in this journal entry. I'll, you know, someone will ask a question. I'll, like, like, with the with the ring where he, like, shows it off and he's like, yeah, I'm done talking about this now. I think I've said too much. And, and it's just like those little moments where like you get to drop in a story that you know you've started making and mm -hmm. you know everyone is going to be excited about and the same you're excited about everyone else is is fun i think my favorite moments of the campaign so far uh there's a lot it's hard. tricky mm -hmm. yeah like already it's um... been a really good start Fuck, yeah, I don't know. There's been a lot of good shit. I think right now, what I'm enjoying the most is the fact that Eladrin's, like, Illuminati backstory came up, and I just get to weave in random NPCs that have this tattoo and just <laughs> watch the paranoia Watch the unfold. panic. <laughs> like, I think that is, right now, my favorite, uh, my, my favorite, like, ongoing thing. I also really enjoyed, um... I, I really liked, and it's a fresh one, but I really liked uh, this like whole Kusu thing that happened on the roof of the of the tavern, because it kind of cemented that a Davin isn't crazy, Kusu is real, and he now has a witness, <laughs> but also kind of made it so that someone else besides that Duke could experience Kusu as a as a character and kind of realize like oh this is very real and. I think it sets up a really nice like story arc uh, that we're going to go into with this final tier and what the fuck's going to happen after. But also, um, I don't know. I, I think that was a really good moment because uh, it also, I feel like, kind of... Because Brooks and Davian before that didn't really interact like that. Kind of yeah. brought that I think, a little... I'll give that I a little more... Brooks has more, really uh, tried with Davian. What am I trying to say? Davian. It kind of gave that like relationship a little more meat, a little more like, oh... Yeah, Brooks is also in the same party as Davian, even though they don't really interact like that normally. You know what I mean? It, it's it's difficult for Brooks because the way that he gets to know people and spends time with people is carousing. It's going out. It's having fun. <laughs> you want to get so. Whereas Davian's very like not serious, but like that's just not his his vibe. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, he'd much rather go out and just like chill out for a day. So mm -hmm. like having them have that now in common and like. That and the coffee are the two things right now that, like, they're <laughs> in cahoots with. But Brooks has gone from, this guy's just here, to like, yeah, this guy's alright, to, oh shit. Is that what it's like for everyone in terms of, like, is that what it's like for Kess? Is that what it's like for Lazarin? Like, mm -hmm. Brooks doesn't not believe in these things. But he, does, he doesn't have any experience with it, so, like, he's no, no idea. You yeah, know, exactly. in the same of, like, the gods exist, sure. 
I don't expect him to like sit and have a conversation. <laughs> it really went from you playing this like super religious ASMR to a fucking atheist. <laughs> a li- Bro- Brooks is so different from. I'll be right back, Grant, real quick. Okay. And that's really not atheist, fun. I guess, because atheists don't believe in gods. But like, I you know what I mean? Like this not even just uh, yeah, like. Fella. Like, Brooks is like, I know the gods exist. Yeah. Because I go onto a church and I feel sick. Uh, but at the same time, <laughs> I've they've never done anything for me. Why the fuck should I care? You know, it's like telling me that there's a guy that lives fucking four towns down that's got a funny nose. Cool, I believe you. <laughs> Doesn't do Random. shit for me. <laughs> so for him then to, like, realize that, like, some of the people in this group have, like, these really close relationships with these really powerful beings... And a lot of that is like he's surrounded by these people that have like oh, really I can't incredible wait abilities. For Brooks. I'm gonna have to make it so that Brooks randomly meets Lyra, like literally like the Lady of Joy and the Goddess of Partying, and realize, oh my God, this is the one, dude. And try and put, <laughs> try and try and put a move on the literal. I can't wait for her. Partying. Like the worst part is <laughs> if he doesn't know, and like she's just there having a party. He meets this woman, they have a great night. She fucks off, and then like someone's like, bro. You not notice the like the like necklace she was wearing? Like that, that might have been a date and he's like, nah, nah, nah don't be silly. You just you just bo- you just boned a deity. <laughs> man, <laughs> That'd be up. so funny. Uh if anyone in the party would. <clears throat> true, true. I do um, not like Laura. Actually, yeah. wait, 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 we went over this for you guys already. Like we know, you know, whether you prefer uh, heavy RP sessions or heavy combats. Yeah, We've already went over that. But for me, uh RP, absolutely. Uh combat is fun and exciting but gets boring quite fast if you have like just session to session big epic battles they get boring where there's rp character development i that that's 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 the shit right there well that's <laughs> like the bread in your sandwich it needs to be there to some extent to make it a sandwich yeah but it, if you just have bread it's a pretty shitty sandwich yeah pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> um laura Yes. How has Daigon's attitude towards Jax changed over the last few weeks? Ooh. Um, definitely. I think the only thing that was kind of when we first found like the egg and then it was like the whole, oh, does he want to do? Because she's very much like dragons, big bad dragons. No, no, we don't fuck with those. Like I've never seen one. I've never, I never want to. From what the little bit I've heard, leave that shit alone. <laughs> and very nervous. But because of the, the insight checks and the bag of holding and the working uh together she does 100 percent believe um that he hasn't been somehow kept the dragon or the egg or something mm-hmm. um and also just a nice at the end when he's like oh no i like having you around he's like with all without being rude like it's nice to have someone to listen because also like that's a comment especially as people get older like irl and in D like seniors are often very kind of Get up to mistreated or just straight up ignored because everyone's like oh yeah whatever what you have to say isn't like relevant to me or my generation or it's just out of the patience okay. to listen to you tell it because their stories are so long like lots of old pe- like senior citizens just want people to still appreciate them the way they did when they were younger right so yeah, and sure. then Daigon Di- gets that the whole wanting someone to talk to and wanting to be appreciated because <laughs> she's also been hard up for both those things before so makes sense plus she's just Again, it comes from the whole being, not only just being super curious innately, but also the, she grew up being the, I want to learn any and every skill I can to make myself as useful as I can to try and not be so like mistreated and to try and find a place in the, the tribe that she grew up in. So she learned like tanning, she learned weaving, she learned hunting, she did security detail. She even learned to play some musical instruments uh, minimally. Like she tried to do anything that she could learn. Just mm-hmm. to be like, I can do things, use me. So this is kind of falling back into that habit um, of I just want to learn new skills and this seems cool. <clears throat> so also it's just fun to have someone who's like, I'm willing to also just like teach you stuff and not be like, no, this is these are this is secrets. Like you can't you can't know what I'm doing. So Yeah. <clears throat> I'm I'm curious and excited to see where that goes. Um uh... Down the line. Eventual like monk said, fisher multi uh, And it's been brought up by Ethan uh, already, but it's it's cool to see Daigon kind of having a reason now to not just buddy buddy with Kess and actually go out and kind of get to know the other party members a little better. And I think yeah. it's great that you chose Jax to be that person 
because I feel like out of all the people in the party, Jax has like, besides Daigon, Jax has like the least amount of social contacts really, or like like that with yeah. anyone else. So it's really cool to see like the two the people <laughs> that really don't have that deep of social connections, except for the per person that they were buddied with, um, kind of get together and get to know each other. And that's gonna be... Plus, dude, I need Soko to fucking spill the beans on his backstory because it's so cool and I can't <laughs> wait to like make that care make that story arc happen well maybe he'll tell me eventually so maybe now that Soko or Jax no, is more than just a drunk to be his friend maybe that'll get pulled out of him dude who knows the <laughs> thing is as well like I think part of it is down to Jax's personality but also like the way the group came together yeah where like you've got two people that have been traveling around together for a while two people that are essentially best friends at this point and then you've got Brooks and Jax, who, like, yeah, they get along. A marriage Jax, of convenience. <laughs> you know, they've been together a week. Their mutual bond is making things. They are both, like... And drinking. Like, yeah. Like, it's not that they dislike each other, but also, like, when you've hung around with someone for a week, you're like, yeah, this guy's cool. He's useful to have around. And I'm sure jo Jax has the same perspective on Brooks. Whereas, like, you know, he knows his way around smithing tools. He can help me do shit if I need him to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's good to have around in a fight. So you've got those two characters that really don't have ties like everyone else does. And Brooks, of course, that's easy for him. You know, he's very chatty, very outgoing. He makes an effort to... Whereas Jax is the more, like, sort of reserved old man. Yeah. So it's really nice to see him get more of a... Like a, a seat at the table to some respect. Mm -hmm. Um, got two questions for you, Ethan. Oh God! First one being, uh, we've already kind of gl glanced over it, but uh, Brooks's feelings on the whole Kosuth experience with Davian. Fucking terrified! <laughs> right, you've got this man who, for years, has either hit things or punched things or mixed things for a living. Now he continues to Sometimes punch things all and mix at the same time. <laughs> yeah, now he continues to punch things and mix things and, you know, like, he's like, yeah, cool, okay, like, magic exists, I know magic exists, my dad used to tell me stories about magic and, like, my brother has an interest in it. But now it's, it like, and... in my face. <laughs> yeah, like, you. he's, like, looking at all these people, it's bad enough in the group having all these spellcasters, he's looking at the shit that, like, Kess does and, like, the shit that, like... Davian can do and like the things that Jax makes. The He's looking at all of this and like his own very minor abilities and being like, this is like so fucking out of my like realm of comfort. And then it's like, yeah, by the way, here's a fucking elemental fireman. And he's like, sir, this is above my pay grade. I just hit things. Yeah, and funnily as well, like, Kosuth isn't even necessarily a god. Um, no, but he's, like, he's a primordial, which is different. basically just this very powerful being made of elemental energy. Um, like, people revert, revert him as god, as a god, but technically, technically, not a deity. Uh, no, yeah. Very technically. <laughs> he's, he's it's basically like trying a god, to explain to a duck one. that there's a difference between a car and a lorry. Yeah. You know, like... Brooks is like, this thing's fucking terrifying. Because he has some issues with... his th Things that are outside his realm of, like... Brooks likes to have things in a position where he feels in control. And uh, big <laughs> powers like that are outside of his... You can't control that shit. <laughs> no. I can't <laughs> manipulate something of that power into being on my side. I can't, like, no, the, button the, them up. The scariest thing about Kosuth for me, is that he is a true neutral. He will only get involved with something if it actually affects him and send yeah. people off to do things that matter to him. He couldn't give a toss otherwise. And that makes it uh, a very hard character to roleplay. Because yeah. he needs to always have a goal in mind. Because like, okay, why would he? Need, why would he need Davian? Like, this is not just we'll he's not out. giving this to Davian because Davian is a good dude. He clearly he wants something off of Davian, and and how you know what I mean? Like, there's definitely, uh, which is uh, scary for me because I need to I need to role play that well. Is this a proposal uh, to Davian? <laughs> because. 
Kosuth is in it for himself and himself alone. Um, mm -hmm. He wants something happen. He wants something to be done for him. He doesn't care who does it. That's why he set up this like competition almost. Oh, whoever brings me the tears first. Uh, just to see whoever is worthy of doing this thing for him or whoever his like uh his um idea is whoever is capable enough to bring me these three tears and not die in the process will be capable enough to do the thing that needs to be that needs to be done uh and that's really the only like he doesn't care who does it like sure he's he's buddy buddying up with davian but if davian dies tomorrow or someone else brings him the tears he could he doesn't give a toss you know what i mean <laughs> he just wants those tears and that's it um um which is something that is for me very hard like i, I need to make sure that i in all times keep in mind this guy is not here to make to be friendly or be friends he's he needs something he cannot do it alone he needs the help of someone to do it for him slash with him probably for him and this is literally just like a tournament he hosts to see oh who, who gets the lucky privilege to do something for me and in exchange i'll give you some powers that's that's really it you know and it's um it doesn't make him a bad guy absolutely not but it also doesn't make him a good guy per se yeah. you know what i mean and that's kind of like the whole like fear of the unknown thing like okay why is this guy giving me these powers what does he need to be done mm -hmm. and what if i don't like the thing that he needs me to do once i'm set out to do it um so that's gonna be that's gonna be fun <laughs> that's gonna be yeah, fun <laughs> brooks was like yeah this shit ain't for me my guy yeah, i mean that's fair <laughs> yeah that's very fair i, um, I can't get this guy sure. drunk i can't manipulate him i'm out no <laughs> nope um, is Brooks going to be primarily monk or barbarian, and why? Um, I'm not set on anything. Mm -hmm. You know, early levels. And let the a, RP decide. A little bit. Um, I know that I had much more freedom with Bran. Um, with this, I had at least like the first four or five levels mapped out. Mm -hmm. What are you right now at level four? Did you go three I'm and one monk or two three, and two? I'm monk three, barb one. So what's your subclass for a monk that you picked? Uh, drunken master. Right, right. Never mind. Duh. <laughs> um, Fuck yeah. Which, dude. like, I had early levels. I have such a good, mind. such a good fucking fit, bro. Because <laughs> realistically, I rolled really well on stats, but as a multi-class, it's really suboptimal. Like, oh yes, there's some. Yes and no, like it's considered really bad and like I looked at it first, I was like, this is awful. And then the more I started to play with it, the more I was like, actually, if I'm really careful with it, I can make this really good. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like Laura's always, Dagon's always going to be ahead of Brooks in terms of martial arts that, you know, her punches are going to do more. But if I'm raging, that bonus negates that. So actually I end up doing like half a damage more per and die. And makes you way less squishy than me. Yes. yes. But then I also know that like a lot of the abilities I'm basically ruling myself out from using. Stunning yeah. Strike, for example, Brooks, like on a character sheet, Brooks can use Stunning Strike. But I've basically dumped Wisdom. I mean, my wisdom, my key save is only one better than yours. And even though I've been For trying now. to make it like mine's a 12 and yours is an 11 right now. But it's save. also like, it's not like, that different. I haven't even decided if I want Brooks to use it because I don't know if it fits thematically. And I think ruling myself well, could, out of could, a class. Like the feature, thing with Stunning Strike is like you can make it. Yeah, you can flavor it whatever you want. You can flavor it whatever you want. So, like, if you just know, your stunning strike could be, you know, the classic bar fight, shatter a glass bottle over someone's head, he goes night night, right? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, 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 it's definitely doable. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> early levels, I had a plan out in mind because I had to. Because there were certain things where, like, I had to take Barbarian first mm -hmm. in order to get the unarmored defense first because you can't gain an armored defense twice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can choose what you use for your AC calculation. If you have armor and unarmored defense, you can choose. But you can't get unarmored defense twice. It's a really weird rules sort of uh, it's, application. It's also, might I add, very niche. Yeah. Like, right, who the fuck like, plays a monk barbarian? Right? So like, like, it's so. It's not even in sage advice. Because... Races slash classes that give you unarmored defense, and the chance of someone picking two that both give you that bonus is so slim 
that it, it, yeah, it there is no official rulings really on it besides they don't stack because it happens so little and there's no real like typically when it's when there's like unclear rules or rules with a lot of nuance um, there'll be like forums dedicated a, to it and yeah. shit like that to kind of help DMs and players decide. For this dude, nah, none of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> this, I, I spent like, no one has ever spent experienced this week. issue except for Ethan. Ethan is the first. I, I oh, went were you like hoping a solid by week. saying taking it twice? Were you hoping it would stack? Is that what you no, mean by no, you can't use like, it twice? If I took monk first and then barbarian, if you do that on D and D Beyond, it will automatically use the monk or barbarian, and I'm a defense depending which is higher. Oh. Oh, Whereas, oh, I see. Okay. I know that rules is written. It shouldn't do that. It should always be whichever you get first. Whatever if you, you go first, monk and then yeah. barbarian, you can never use barbarian and armor defense because you don't get it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So then I was like, okay, for that to work within the rules, I need to take barbarian first. And then like this shit, someone reported it on the D&D Beyond forums four years ago. <laughs> and they replied, and it's never been fixed, which shows you how rare it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I think where I'm at now, I see the end result being Barbarian 3 slash 4. Uh, there's not many subclasses that, like, give me much of a benefit from a 3-4 level dip. I've never then... really had to deal with, like... It's always the only thing like I'd say when you go when you multi-class and you get like to the point where you have two subclasses, right? That's that's yeah. where I'm yeah. like, oh, that's that's tricky, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, think... if you go, I, if on paper, I, I given, I've never, I've only played a barbarian for a one shot, so I don't, I've never gotten very far in terms of them. But I, I feel like it'd be pay off more to put more levels in a monk just because you get a, a whole new key point every level, yeah. and those get those can do so many things, and they're just the so very... multi-purpose. The very short version of it is that Barb levels give me more survivability, Monk uh, levels give me more yeah. DPS and more utility. Yeah. Okay, so which which one do you care more about? Uh, I think but let's I'm... be honest, the real answer is he's going to get hella jealous about all the cool shit Dagon's doing and try and keep True. up and just take all the bug levels. <laughs> um, I think real realistically, my plan now is that I'm going to settle at, Monk at Barbarian 3, maybe Barbarian 4 <laughs> if I need the stat increase, which I don't think I do. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm just going to play out Monk and see how it goes. But like, if, if I find that I'm going down all the fucking time, I'll you start pushing do, into yeah. Barbarian again. But I think in terms of the character, like, Everything image in my head. Damage. Yeah, not mm -hmm. even that, but like, Brooks as a person, I think Brooks is more of a drunken master monk than he is a Barbarian. Yeah, I would agree. Just the, his personality and the fact that yeah. he fucking... Eats, breathes, t lives in shits, taverns and alcohol and mixing yeah, and that like, sort of thing. Like, the fact that like he often plays off that he's well drunker than he is and everyone assumes that he's an alcoholic and he's happy for them to make that assumption. You know, yeah, that's like... literally how the drunken like master thing works. It's yeah. like you have this drunken swagger to your movements, uh, but you're secretly super like on the ball and that's exactly what you Which... want your the enemy to perceive. When it's supposed to be, with you. you know, traditional like drunken master where the subclass stems from as a martial art. It's supposed to be very, very flowing, but to give that appearance of like swaying. Yeah. But I can also see like playing it out with Brooks as it being like very clumsy. Like he knocks into someone, but it's on purpose. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And that's just the sort of person he is. Like if he wanted to pickpocket someone, he'd just be like, oh, sorry there, you know. Oh, sorry that pal. Yeah, like, it, it feels... I think that's my goal for it, for now. Because mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to hit level 20. <laughs> you Like, you never know, but I don't see it happening. So I think for now, I'm going to go... I think campaigns go... rarely get to level 20, let's be very honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Like, I, the way I see it now... Th this campaign could last longer than campaign one. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, it's a great fun so far. Because there's um, so much... Dude, for all I know, Campaign 3 will take place on this continent as well because there's so much fucking unexplored terrain and then, you know, Campaign yeah. 3 will be uh, down the line where a lot more I of this ca this continent has been colonized and has been settled and whatever the fuck. Like, there's so much fucking room for activities on this new continent that I, on purpose, haven't filled in yet besides, like, uh, ha like, like, not even half the zones I have filled in because I'm like, the chances of us actually experiencing all these places are so slim i'd rather give myself a partially done canvas so that for like yeah. next campaign i can 
fill in that that blank part and you know what I mean? Uh, but we'll see how it goes, obviously. I can't wait for us to like start exploring outside of this province if we get to it. It's gonna get like, if we go wild, to Fabro's footing, like that's gonna be fun for, for me. Yeah, basically and... the way I've done it is like um I've designed or have a rough design idea for uh Fabro's footing. Because I know a couple of the characters in the party are from there, so the chance of you guys going there at some point is very likely. Yeah. Um, I've very much fleshed out Keldar, because that's where the campaign is taking place, so I want to make yeah. sure that that place is like as finished as possible. Um, the zones in between Keldar and Ferber's Footing, I have a rough idea for, and kind of, kind of put in, like, not finished by a long shot, but like, I know enough of for it to like, you know, it will there is some information out there on those zones purely because I know at some point it's going to be a trek from A to B so I was like okay I want, I want the path there other than that um, I have like a rough idea for two zones and that's about it the rest is just all like fuck it I don't, I don't even know pretty much um, it's going to be good it's going to be fucking it's going to be wild because y'all are if you reach outside of Keldar Y'all are getting into some actual, like, wilderness shit, unexplored terrain, nobody's really been, nobody has settled, I mean, it's gonna be... I feel it's like... It's gonna be good shit! Bring your fucking jungle just... remedy, because you're gonna fucking need it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, I can see Brooks pushing to take shit. Like, I just want to get high enough could. monk level yeah, where no, I can't get poisoned before we do that, or disease. You could absolutely uh, travel by ship, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, we travel by ship to Fabra's footing, like... Do a little Without spoiling too much... get fucking kidnapped by pirates, dude? Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Without spoiling too much, like, the stuff that you know about Brooks and that place in particular, I feel like th that specific thing, dude, he could get in so much if trouble. If y'all, dude, Jax, bro. Yeah. Pirates, yeah, if, if we get to Pirates, if Jax If y'all travel by sea, you know damn well I'm gonna fucking pull some Jax shit out of my fucking hands. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I can't Hell wait yeah. for it to be, like, Jax refusing to get on a boat because he's like, if I get in the water, they're gonna arrest me, man. I can't... <laughs> I'm on a no-fly list. That's true. That is also <laughs> it's, it's like, definitely a thing. <laughs> it's like the opposite of the whole, like, Ford couldn't go on the water because of his ex-warlock patron, but it's like, nah, 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 you can't go on the water because of just regular human shit. They'll find you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, the the police it. say nah. Duke with the question whether you guys prefer uh, RP. How do you feel about that. RP have sessions compared to dungeon delving and combat? Uh, can't hurry even over that, right? That. Yeah. Um, we like combat. We love RP. We yeah. love both of our children, but we RP love is the favorite. So where, does, where does dungeon delving fit into that tier list, though? Um. I, I'm, I'm really torn with dungeon delving because I feel like, to me, dungeon delving so intrinsically linked with combat. Yeah, to me, they're the same no. thing. But, the, like, I was like, dungeon delving, I kind of like the least just because it's the hardest for me to, Stay focused. I guess, get out of my own, no, get out of my own head and be oh. like, this is an endurance stamina. Like, it's just about making it out because like, they can be longer, right? They're more elaborate. It's like more combat concentrated. And, it's harder for me to resist metagaming because I'm like, the odds of this happening and like, we have X many more, like rooms are, we're, we've only been in this dungeon for this long. I think there's more and leaving and, but it's also, it's so hard to then pass up normally the, because usually dungeons mean loot and shinies and things to tempt you. The DM is specifically put, someone's like, I want you to find, someone's like, this is very obviously a do not touch, but you're going to touch it anyway. And so, so I like them the least probably of the okay. three things, dungeon delving, combat and RP, it's RP one, combat two, dungeon delving at the bottom. All right. Um, Dungeon delving needs puzzles, Laura. True. So I do like puzzles. puzzles a lot, though. I, I do that like that puzzles. Part. I do I like, like puzzles, me a puzzle. even if they can send me to the abyss. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, mean, I, I hate. That's the one thing I hate about Brooks. Right? We get puzzles, and I fucking love puzzles. But Brooks doesn't give a shit. <laughs> so I'm like that internally screaming that I know the answer to this riddle, while Brooks is like rummaging through his bag to see what alcohol he brought with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Duke says uh, you and I have complete opposite opinions on that Laura I want to touch and explore everything because DM put it there to be touched and explored <laughs> well again DM put yeah. some things there in my opinion like if I at least the way I would DM I definitely would put some things there that are meant like I want you to explore and I'd be really excited if you found it but I would also definitely put things there that are traps to punish you for your own hubris like if this is a yes, screamingly I, obvious I, that doesn't don't mean I don't touch want it. you to touch it I want you guys to get punished for your hubris. Uh, Smile. <laughs> it's like the fucking coffins, right? Where everyone like everyone's like, yeah, let's fuck with these coffins. There might be some goodies. And like, 
I'm like out of character. I'm like, there's a 50 50 chance Dutch put some cool shit in there, or like they're gonna get like, yeah, like fucking a fucking mummy with chlamydia. fucking ruby eyes, dude. It's lit. Brooks was like, nah, fuck that shit, you know? <laughs> Being yeah. raised in like a fairly uh -uh. superstitious household, like, like Brooks's family, there's the sort of like you have like horseshoes hung up above the door, you know? There's a lot of like Gaelic and Celtic <laughs> folklore inspiration. So Brooks is like, nah, fuck that shit. I'm not touch. You don't touch a coffin. You don't disturb the dead. Nope. Right. Uh, the final question before we get into uh, the Jeopardy section of uh, the night. For Laura, is Diagon cold and stoic as her silence portrays, or are these unfair assumptions made based on the fact that she simply can't speak? Oh. Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Because it's like over time, she definitely has become and is in many ways the whole stoic side of Bika just because not many people to talk to and it's like the kind of you treat someone like something long enough they become that thing right and to part but at her core and like what's what came out it's like what she remembered about herself as she traveled with Kess and got like reminded with people is she is the, I say the, the side of her personality that the most of the party don't know but Kess does is the playful uh, and like jokester, she loves like she loves she she thinks she has a great sense of humor. She thinks she's hilarious. Problem <laughs> is, most people can't understand my jokes because they can't talk to me. Like the amount of times that people would say something, and and Diagon has like a one liner ready to go, but it's like, but no one's gonna know because I'll just <laughs> I'll wave my hands and it'll go over everyone's head. That's really and stuff sad. like that. Yeah, that really like and, and also it's also hard too because even then, as a player, I'll try and say it even just a cast. It's like Diagon signs, blah blah blah, but. Even just those extra words, like I signed to Kes, the time it takes me to get that out. And if there's ever mm -hmm. a moment where it's kind of like the talking is happening very layered over each other, not because we're interrupting, but just it's one of those moments where lots of people have opinions or say, it also is very easy to get lost because by the time it takes me to say that, someone else is already further into their thought. And then we want to jump on that because it's a good yeah. thing to continue conversation or role play. Mm -hmm. So I'd say there's, there's definitely a very comedic, and humorous side, like the main thing, like for example, Kess and Daigon, everyone they met, they tell a different reason why Daigon can't talk. And they've never told the same story twice because True. it's it's a meme to them. Cause it's funny. Uh, like yeah. the, so like, and we did it once in campaign when she mentioned, oh, we're the circus. Like, oh yeah, swallowing, she used to be a sword swallower. Fucked it up, didn't work anymore. Like that was <laughs> the latest in, in series of things. And I also like there's there, I tried to do some of the one liners Didn't before. Didn't like, soup before she ate it. Yeah, like someone mentioned, like someone said something yeah, there's Daigon is a very, while she is, or believes she is, asexual, she also is in not, no way like a prude and is a very, like, very lewd personality and would also love to make lewd jokes if anyone else in the group could understand them. But Kes. Yeah. And like, like she's, she's tried to do it once or twice. She did it even to Brooks sometimes too, did. I think, or in early days. She's made some yeah. of those, the only Kes knew what she was saying. Um, so yeah, but, but at the same time, the way she's been treated and it's like even it's hard to let her guard down so she is that very stoic and like slow to let people in but once you're kind of past that she's a pretty she's meant to be a pretty pretty good sense of humor bit of a prankster and a jokester at heart she's made all, all harmless like never anything like never the person who takes a joke she likes to think she would never take a joke too far she would never do anything that would like all right this could actually make someone seriously upset with like what, I, it is a joke. I intend for everyone to laugh. Someone? Yeah, like I intend for everyone to laugh if they find out, you know. I really can't wait for that side of Dagon to come out. We've had a few moments of those, you know, like she's made like an offhand comment about Brooks doing something before, and it's yeah. always fucking hilarious. Yeah. Also, a lot of her <laughs> jokes she loves to make are playing on the fact that everyone thinks she's like that, like someone, like because she's so silent. So, say someone's like, "Oh, do any of your party like perform ever?" I like would sign like, "Yeah, I'm a stand-up comedian." And just like, it's like that deadpan humor in that, like, I don't smile when I say the jokes, I don't laugh, but that makes them funnier. And it's like, yeah, because, haha, -ha, funny, because I can't talk. If we ever have like stand a, like, -ha. long-term downtime, I think Brooks wants to learn a little bit more of, of these kinds of Dude, that of was so cute. When, when Brooks was like, I want to learn some sign language, I was like, oh, that's cute. It, she it's... was so happy. That was her favorite, because like, all <laughs> she wants to, to think, so many people to be like, oh, because we can't, like, communicate, but it's like, but no one's ever wanted to take the effort to learn. Mm -hmm. Like, no, and that, that which means a lot, because especially even in real life, there's people who it's like, they start losing their hearing, or people who are born with hear partially deaf or full deaf, and the amount of people who would rather they do the work, like, you learn to read lips, and you learn to whatever, rather than, like, I learn 
to the way you communicate. And that's such a huge gesture of both respect and like inclusion. Like I want to stick you, I want you to be in my life for a while. So I'm going to make the effort to learn to, to communicate the way you do. That's a very big deal. So anyway, and, and one time, the one time Jack's ever hurt her feelings was when she did try and say it at one time in the bar. She was like, I could teach you a little bit of sign language. He's like, nah, I like it better this way. And he's like, now you can just keep writing in your book and I just get to talk to you. And she was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Brooks has made a few attempts to make sure that Dagon feels included. He's gone out of his way to learn what drink she likes. He bought a fucking uh, uh, Stormy Sky because it had ginger beer in it and I forgot that. But, you know, like the fucking dancing thing. Um, mm -hmm. Because the part... I don't want to give away too much. I don't want to <laughs> give away too much. Then don't. Brooks, Brooks, Brooks likes Dagon. But Brooks is also that person where, like, he wants everyone on his good side. He wants yeah. everyone to think good of him because it of course, yeah. him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okie dokie. I think it's time. Oh, it's time. Da -da -da -da. To play some Jeopardy, baby. So. Oh, my God. Alex, as soon as, uh, ooh, uh, uh, yo, relax, Discord. Are we good? <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, we're going to play Jeopardy. First things first. We're going to have some rules here. All right. Um <laughs> First of all, we roll. You guys both roll a d20. Whoever rolls highest goes first. <gasps> the person that pick goes first picks a category and an amount. Uh, the more points, the harder the question. When you pick, I will read out a statement, and you both have thirty seconds to buzz in to answer. If someone yes. buzzes in, they get another thirty seconds to form an answer. If they answer wrong or the timer runs out, the points that this question is worth gets deducted from their score, um, and that question is done. If no one answers, I read the correct answer, uh, and that person that picked the category picks again. So basically, you pick a question, mm -hmm. get it correct, you get points, you pick next question, get it wrong, get points deducted, opponent picks question, yep. you pick question, no one answers, you pick question again. I've watched so many years of Jeopardy. There you I'm go. So ready. There you go. <laughs> you never watched you normal go. Jeopardy. Oh really? I've, I've watched, watched it all the time. people play the video game. So, <laughs> so uh, with right. that, uh, let me just quickly get the buzzer ready. I'm rolling the D20 yes. that so Duke got me for the first time. The D20. Same. So we're about to find out who Duke prefers. All right, Duke. Okay. This is a, this is your fault if whoever loses. Okay. Would you roll a one? Oh, um, let me grab my phone. I'm not going to touch you. I want to take a photo. It's oh, you roll a 20. 20. Yeah. It's either a one or a 20. <laughs> it's a 20, baby. It's a 20. <laughs> I, I rolled a 13. But just, I'll still take that. Anything above 10 for a first roll of a dice, I'll take it. That right there is a 20. All right. There you go. I mean, Laura, did you also roll a 20 by chance? No, I rolled a 13, so there I'll take go. it. All right. <laughs> so, Ethan uh, and Laura, we have five oh. categories. Know your show, you're a wizard, Harry, <laughs> monsters in the closet, canonically in canon, and oh my gods. Five oh. questions per category. The higher the points, the more uh, difficult the question will be. And with that, Ethan, because you rolled highest, you get to pick first. Good luck Where can we to start both of you. Easy, Laura? Huh? Do we reckon we start off easy? You do whatever you want. Uh, you're a wizard, Harry, for 100. You're a wizard, hey. Harry, for 100. All right, here Too we go. Too bad it's not actually Harry. This cantrip allows the caster to talk to a target it can see, or if familiar with them, through barriers as well. All right, Beanie buzzed in first, so let me just reset the timer. You have 30 seconds to form an answer. Oh, by the way, you have to answer in a question. Forgot, forgot about yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is message? What'd you say? Repeat that. What is message? Correct. What is message? So See, it was I message was, or sending. I was gonna say I just was torn whether it was message or sending. I thought you didn't have to see them. Oh, that's why it's if familiar through well, various uh, stuff. The question Never states mind. this cantrip. Yeah. Yeah, sending I couldn't remember which I, one was the cantrip. I didn't, and which I didn't one even was the... think about the fact that sending isn't a cantrip. <laughs> I'm just like fuck See, it. I you couldn't need... remember if which one was the cantrip and which was level whatever. So there you go, Ethan. You're on the board. You get to pick the next question. I'm officially better than Bell. <laughs> at, at this point, yes, sure. Uh, you're a There's a Harry long way to go. You're a wizard here for two hundred. All right. Oh, we have to wait till you read the question to buzz, right? Uh, I mean, I if you what, like, I mean, the question is there, so I would appreciate it if okay. you let me read. Uh, but yeah, okay. uh, this ninth level spell allows the caster up uh, the caster and up to eight others to be projected into the astral plane. 
I'm buzzing. It's not working. Uh, so there yeah. we go. I buzzed. Laura. A astral project. <clears throat> oh, what is astral project? I thought maybe technically astral projection. What is astral projection? There you go. There I'm go. gonna give you that. I'm gonna give you that. Uh, it, it is astral projection. I was gonna be very nitpicky, but you corrected yourself. I'll allow that. Uh, remember. The you know, that's my question. one freebie after that yeah. no more <laughs> uh, so correct you're on the board with 200 and with that laura you now pick the next question um know your show for 100 this is where i think know i can your do show okay for 100 uh. the first mission of campaign one was to retrieve <gasps> this oh, oh what is beanie what is first oh, oh, God, what? It. The crew was I'm glad I didn't say it. Oh, correct. I was right though. I wasn't even in the campaign at that point. <laughs> Dude. I was buzzing, but I guess you were you were a half faster literally, on the trigger than like, I was. Boom, and Beanie got it just like literally just. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn. I think clicking right. works better than spacebar. Uh, maybe I don't know. Correct, Ethan. So you're both tied at 200 points with four or three questions had. Uh, no wrong answers or question skips yet. So this is boding very, very well. Uh, Ethan, with that. Oh my god, for 500. Oh my gods, for 500. Oh. Here we go. This demon lord ruled over a layer of the abyss named the Endless Maze. I got nothing. This is very much a if you know what you know with question. Uh, if you yeah. don't, you don't. I feel like I'm going to say it, and I'm going to be like, I've Beanie. heard that. With, a, with buzzing in. Okay, you have 30 seconds to form an answer, Beanie. Uh, fuck. 20 seconds. It's by far out of ball. It's by far out of ball. What is... Uh, who is... Baphomet? Who is Baphomet oh, is Oh, you got it! Let's I you. only know this. With the whooping... 500 hundo Damn. good shit good there's shit two demon lords that fuck around in the abyss and ah <laughs> uh, D, D funky there you go only noticed because i googled it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> same yeah well, honestly same I james this, I i've got questions. four different screens over here i've got a, a stage hand who's pulling Cheater. up all the answers Cheater. <laughs> <laughs> all right ethan you're up to pick. Canonically in canon for 300. Canonically in canon for 300. All right. The fall of this city caused a flood of refugees oh, to hit no. Baldur's oh. Gate. I've I should know played. this. I should know this. It's you referenced Baldur's in Baldur's Gate. Gate. It is referenced yeah, in Baldur's is, Gate, and it is, is also a big part of the Descent into Avernus campaign. Which I've also never played. Fuck, what's the name of the city? I don't know, but you guys have 15 it. seconds to buzz in. It got sent... Uh, it got sent to Avernus. It got teleported. What's the name of the fucking city? I, I don't know. Fuck. I'm not going to buzz in for it because I don't know the name of the city, but I know I'll be angry at myself. Okay. And with that, your time is... The answer to this question, Elturel. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't Elturel know gets teleported into the yeah. fucking... Yes. Uh, into the hells. It does, yeah. With, uh... with, they made a deal with... Fucking Zariel, I think. Yeah, they did. I'm running, I'm running this campaign uh, off stream with some homies, which is why. Oh, I, uh, nice. Yeah, uh, so I'm a good angry time. at myself. It's a good time. We're still very early on in the campaign, but it's uh, it's a fucking good time, dude. It's, a, it's, it's so it's a cool. Good You've got siege yeah. machines, soul coins, mm. fucking politics, dope shit, a blood um, war. With that, nobody answered that question, and Ethan picked that one. So Ethan, you get to pick again. Canonically in canon for two hundred. Let's Canonically go easier. Canonically in I'm canon feeling stupid. for two hundred. The Gith spent a long time being enslaved by these creatures. Beanie? Is this who are or what is? Doesn't matter, as long as question. I'm not too picky. What? Uh, the Illithid? I was going to say that. What are the Damn are Illithid? It. Correct. So with that, boom, Ethan had 200 points. I hesitated. Uh, Ethan had like the one up there, which is why it was an easier question, because you know we played Baldur's Gate. We, we played Baldur's yeah, Gate we, and we, because we shit, I, you know. I considered playing a Gith in Well, I knew this because I looked it up, because for a while I thought this was related to what race Marisha was playing in the latest Critical Role, but it's not. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not, but it is fancily like covered in Matt Colville's The Chain. Yeah. All right, uh, Ethan currently at the lead with 900. Currently tied for first, by the way, in the overall ranking. Um, Laura, 200, which makes you like 
as of now, third place, which is Hell yeah. definitely, <laughs> you know, that's dope. Uh, Ethan, yeah. <laughs> you answered correctly, therefore you get to pick the next question. I don't want to stick with shit that I know, because then it's just going to be me being silent for the second half. So <laughs> let's go. Know your show for 500. Oh, Five. my oh, good boy. God. All right. Know your oh. show for 500. The amount of artifacts created by the same event that destroyed the burning scar. Oh, this is oh, gonna be the negatives. I, I think I know, this. but I don't. I know, I know. I'm gonna what risk it. it. I'm gonna risk it. Laura. Thirteen. What? What is thirteen? Unfortunately. Nah, it's too high. It's too high. Twenty-five. Oh, I was close. Uh, there are Twenty-five artifacts. Oh, too low. Damn. Yeah. So with that, Laura, Damn. I'm sorry, but oh, no. you're in the negative. <laughs> you're still I was not like, I debated not doing it because I was like, I'm probably going to be wrong, but I was like, I want to try, though. Yeah, oh, no, there's, uh, there's 25 artifacts that were created by that uh, historical event in Dungeon Select lore. I um, wanted to say 26. I'm and it. I mean, dude, you only found, I don't, I don't know, remember how many you found, found in three Mons, or uh, There's plenty of them out there still, dude. Yeah. Mm, we had, no, because we had at least two. Bran had two. I think you guys found and like we had a, little, a little under half, I think. You've read about more than half, but you only found like. like oh, less than yeah, half. because we then gave up a bunch for the, the ritual to. Yeah. We, we had right. Fenthris, we had. Uh, the Wand of Orcus was one, wasn't it? No. We no, it's had not. Oh. Agony. Um. Was the mall that Nicole had? The, no. Sorry, the club? The club, yeah. The great club, yeah. 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 Uh, um, you had a bunch. Like, uh, Gan had the gloves of the charlatan. Was Trim's which bracelet? One. I forgot. Trim's no, my bracelet wasn't. Trim's restoration was one, yes. Oh, it was? Yeah. Oh, so I know. <laughs> uh, did Kassarin get the sword? I think so. No. no. Yes? I don't remember. There, there's plenty of them. <laughs> the sword total. came up after Kisaren had left the party. I remember being really sad. Like, fuck, right, that would be right, so right, dumb. Right, 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 right. Anyway, with that, Ethan, you get to pick uh, another question. Know your show for 400. Know your show for 400. Boom! Tremaris made a pact with this eldritch being, which caused Kelsier to become a bad <laughs> Oh, my oh, good lord. Oh, Ethan. Yogs who is Yogg-Saren? <laughs> Yes, that's it. Man, I did not expect y'all to jump on this so bad because it's so, of course, so <laughs> quick because it's been so long. But damn, all right. It has been a long time. All right, Ethan. Holy fuck, dude. You weren't even like really a part of the campaign yet. <laughs> that point, like, that point. Uh, no, I was because I fought in that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, no, no, no. You did, you did, you did. Damn. All right, fuck. I thought that would be a harder question. My bad. Um, <laughs> shit. All right, Ethan. I mean, you still got the fucking... It was hard for me. Go nuts. You're a wizard Harry for 500. You're a wizard Harry for 500. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This seventh level spell <gasps> shoots eight multicolored rays of light from your hand. Each ray is a different color oh, wait, and has mind. a different power and purpose. Oh, I'm thinking of one, but it's it's an it's an orb. It's not a ray, so I can't be it. I know what you're thinking of, and I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, oh, Laura. What? What is prismatic spray? What is prismatic spray? Is correct. Oh, thank you. Boom! Big five. I'm back for positive. I'm back positive. Good shit. Good shit. Good shit. All right. There you go. There you go. Laura, with that, uh, you're back in the positive, and oh, um, you get to pick the next okay. question. Let's do. You're a wizard for four hundred. It's the only category I've gotten answers right in. So. You're a wizard, Harry, for four hundred. Yes. This fourth level spell allows the caster to attempt to send a creature it can see. To oh, I was waiting till he finished. Uh, I'm gonna risk you for the biscuit. Beanie. Uh, fourth level specifically. That is what it says, what isn't it? What is banishment? What is banishment? Is correct. Damn you! Damn you! I thought teleportation, but fourth level banishment. Alrighty. It was either that or plane shift, but plane shift is higher level, so I don't think that could have been. Yeah. For the sake of uh, continuing, you are allowed to buzz in before I'm done reading, but I would prefer it if you didn't, but you are allowed. If you're like, eh, pff, then fuck it. Should no. we make a pact, Laura, that neither of us will buzz in until he's done reading? Yeah, and then you could just you could be ready to spam it as soon as he finishes, but... Okay. Okay. There you go. There you as go. long as we're both doing the same thing, it's fair, so... <clears throat> yeah, fair enough. Uh, Alright, with that, Ethan. Uh, you're a wizard, Harry, for 300. Let's you're a wizard, Harry, for 300. Prior to 3rd edition, healing spells were a part of which school of magic? Oh, it changed? I think Indeed. I know this. Interesting. But I don't know if I want to risk the points on it. 
I mean, I have a guess. I just have a guess what school it would be in now, but then that might, that be, might be what the reason they changed it to now. What would have been before? I don't know. I mean, the question is technically multiple choice. Uh, you have 10 more seconds to buzz in. I don't think I'm going to risk it. If you don't risk it, I want to make a guess before Three, Dutch reveals it. Two, two, one. No, you know, guess. All right. No guess. I was going to guess. Can I make a I'm, guess? I'm nope. between transmutation or necromancy, but I didn't want to risk I the I think voice. it's restoration. Uh, no. Is that a school? No. Prior school, to third edition. I would have. Oh, I was close. Healing was spells close. were necromancy. Now, in fifth edition, healing, sp healing spells, so not resurrection spells, but healing spells, are evocation. Because necromancy that. makes sense because you're still like yeah. healing, like animating flesh, kind of, so I could yeah. kind of see it. Oh, I should have. Uh, so they changed tracked. that to, uh, to, to evocation uh, after that third edition. That makes sense. Uh, fun little fact. I didn't know that until I was looking up information on Schools of Magic. So there you go. That's cool. Uh, with that, we have Euro Wizard Harry completely cleared out. And we still have two questions in Know Your Show, five in Monsters in the Closet, the only no category one's like that's monsters. gone untouched. Uh, Canonically in Canon still has three. Oh my god, still has four. And right now we have 200 points for Laura, 1700 for Ethan. But the game is nowhere near over. The way Jeopardy works is Ethan can give up two wrong answers and lose like half of his points. So like it could very oh. well... Uh, swing either way, Ethan. Since Let's... nobody answered, no, uh, yes. Since nobody answered that last question, still Ethan. You picked that question, so you get to pick the next one. Let's go with monsters in the closet for a hundred. All right. Vampires belong to this creature type. Beanie. What is undead? Obviously correct. There okay. you go. I was gonna say, because otherwise is is zombies not a creature type. Oh, I wait, couldn't fuck, I forgot to give you the points. <laughs> <laughs> Look like a newt like this. Okay, we're good. Um boom boom boom, clear that. Alright, yeah, I mean easy one. One hundred points for Ethan. Vampires are obviously undead. Next question. Monsters in the closet for two hundred, why not? I, was, I just don't know fuck what up. creature types exist. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> This dragon color is the only dragon with a poison breath weapon. Probably poster, guess it, but I don't know. The it poster the is behind me. Ugh. Laura, don't let Laura look at any reflections. <laughs> green. What is a green dragon? What is a green yeah. dragon is correct. There you go. Boom. Two hundred points. It seemed obvious, but I was like, that must mean it's a trick question. That seems mm -hmm. too obvious. Yeah, yeah I had the exact same thought. Typically, uh, most breath weapons have like a chromatic dragon that do deals that damage, but also a prismatic dragon. Yeah. Poison only green doesn't have like a yeah. chromatic like counterpart or a prismatic yeah. counterpart uh, prismatic, to it. Yeah. Um, it's it's literally just the green dragon that does poison. Um, very good, Laura. Four hundred points, and you get to pick the next um, question. Let's do know your show for two hundred. Know your show for two hundred. The first town the heroes of exile visited. Oh, no. Laura. Oh, no, this is wrong, because the, the tower was outside of it. I don't think we went there. Okay, um, Port Salim. It's one of the port... What is Port Salim? I don't think that's it. It's going to be, like, one of the other ones. You are so close. Oh, uh, there's, 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 there's Port S's. There's Port S's. There's also, like, Port Salim. There's, like, Port... Sec, kind of thing. I said Port Salim, so I'm wrong. So incorrect. It's Port oh, Serene. I'm Serene. so Damn sorry, it. Laura. That was Damn uh, it. as that close sucks. as you could have gotten. I knew it, kind of. Oh, uh, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry. That, so close, but I have to it's be straight. It's fair though. I Real Jeopardy would do that. Yeah, you didn't. Sorry. Um, <laughs> with that, Ethan, it is your turn to pick a question again. Let's round out Know Your Show for three hundred. Know Your Show for three hundred. This historical event caused the creation of the zone now known as the Burning Scar. Laura. What is the cataclysm? No, wait, no, wait. Oh, I still have wrong. I said it. That's the name of a place now. The cataclysm's where Sai became and where Kisaren's dad became. That's not the name of the event. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I fucked it. Oh, well, that's fine. It's my bad. I, I'll get, if you correct yourself now, I'll allow it. Ah. <sighs> There was like orc wars and i think what was it called though? wars what was it called no i can't i'm blanking uh with that uh i'm gonna give you the wrong answer what for is this the one. what is what is the desolation the sundering. Was it desolation? sundering oh artifacts oh 
I'm so oh, I'm back to the sundering. Damn. Oh. I, do you know it's the worst like... part? I almost said cataclysm as well. <laughs> That's what the Warcraft. It's, it's because it was still what? in my head, probably from the Psy storyline. <laughs> and I was like, maybe. and then I was like, and that, that, that sounds catastrophic. Kind of I was like, wait, I know what that is. That was even in other characters' backstory. <laughs> Unfortunate. I'm sorry, Laura. I really, I really hope so. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you. I really am. <laughs> I mean, I've gotten some right, so I'm happy. Yeah, yeah absolutely, like... absolutely. Uh, I'm just, I'm rooting for you. I want you to do well. <laughs> you know, I, can, I know I can't be biased, but I am. Um, <laughs> Ethan, your turn to pick another question. Let's round out the awful shit. Oh my gods for 400. Oh my gods for 400. All right. The gates of the moon was the divine realm owned by this deity. Oh, fuck you. I think I know who it is, but do I risk Same, it? Same, but I'm always so afraid to guess because I need to, I, I can't afford to lose more points or I can't catch up. <laughs> like Beanie. I'm going to risk it. And if it's wrong, I'm just going to cry. Who is Sahanin? Wrong. It's Saloon. Saloon. I always confuse those fucking two. So with that, that's a minus 400 for uh, nice. Ethan. Uh, Thanks, so Laura, Laura. Thanks for the Laura, support. The comeback is on. The comeback uh, is on. Canonically in canon for 100. Start canonically small. in canon for 100. The, this female witch has her name on various <laughs> canon 5 ebooks, spells named after her, and was also the adoptive daughter of Baba Yaga. Beanie. That was God. okay. No, let's listen. I know it says Beanie first, but I swear I was looking at it and I saw Laura's name flash up before Beanie's. That also might be ping based. Sorry? That might be ping based. I'm gonna pull out the fucking ping card. Dude, I, do we I just. Mean, I knew it as soon as I saw five ebooks. We can split I, it. Yeah, I'll I, I know, I know this. You guys, okay. Because I swear I saw Laura's name before I saw Beanie's. Did this question come up last week? No. No, the question That's about Baba one. Yaga came up last week. Yeah. Baba Yaga came up last oh, week. Oh, no, but in, in D&D, in the pre-chat of D&D, I said, Oh, I never knew that this person was the daughter of Baba Yaga. Oh, maybe. Like, I, didn't, I, I wasn't there for that. I um, didn't, uh, what I'm going to do here, because I swear this website hates Laura, because I swear I saw her name first. <laughs> but it might just have been because you guys both like were pretty much in sync with the buzzing. Yeah. I'm gonna let y'all both roll a d20, and whoever rolls highest gets to answer. Can we not both write it down oh. and share the points? No. Nope. Or both get points? I'm the judge, right. I didn't roll, executioner. I didn't roll that great, so... That's an 18. Yeah, I rolled a 7. Ethan. Uh, it is Tasha. Who is Tasha? Who is Tasha is correct. <laughs> Dude, Dude original... I don't know what the fuck you did to these dice, but my god. Duke, you're but you're you're colluding. You're helping. I rolled them twice. I rolled a twenty and an eighteen. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep cl a closer eye on on the fucking like buzzers <laughs> just in Yo, case because that was weird. Um, going. With that, Ethan, your next question. Uh, oh my gods for hundred. Oh my gods for one hundred. This draconic deity is the god of justice. Fuck. It's not the, the cause, one. it's the other one. Yeah, but what's it? Mm, 20 seconds. Name, 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 name. I know it. I know I know this. Can I give you his title instead of his first name? Nope. Fuck. Laura. Who is Bahamut? Who is Bahamut is correct. Hey, there we go. There you go. Oh. Dragon. The Platinum Dragon. I always I'm back struggle. to neutral. The, I always struggle in my head between Bahamut and Tiamat as to which one's the bad. Tiamat's the bad. Tiamat's bad. Tiamat's the bad. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I know that, but like Bahamut right. in my name just screams like bad man. Uh, I'll do Oh My Gods for 200. Oh My Gods for 200. All right, here we go. Most drow elves in canon lore worship this deity. Beanie. Lol. Who is Lol? Who is Lolf is correct. It's a funny word. Lol. Uh, yeah, angry spider mommy. But, um, <laughs> you know. The spider queen? That question is technically no, long, no longer correct because it's no longer most drow in the Underdark worship her because yeah. nothing is inherently evil anymore. Uh, anyway. Um, <clears throat> I don't have who, who are drow most well known for worshipping? Yeah. This dick. Uh, um, Ethan. <laughs> Let's get rid of it because it's a shitty category. Oh my gods for 300. Oh my gods for 300. 
This deity, with a name similar to the god in, to a god in the Greek mythology, was the interloper deity of waters. Nope, nothing. I can tell I you, the Greek shit. god of the ocean. I mean, but any guess is better than no guess, right? Well, no, because I, I know it's gonna be wrong. We lose points because it's it said similar to, so it's not his name verbatim. I can't think of a D and D god I know that sounds like the Greek god of the ocean. Maybe I put similar there to avoid making the question too easy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't Go with I your guts. That's all I'm saying. No. I should no, I'm not. know it, and I don't, and I'm upset. All right, with that. It's going to say Poseidon, and I'm going to cry, but... Uh... Who is Poseidon? <laughs> <laughs> you even tried like... to tell me without a very like, Laura, just go for it. Like, you should, you should yeah. try, you should, you should do it. And I was like... Ooh. Yeah, I, tried, I really tried. <laughs> you did. You tried your best. Yeah, like the entire Greek mythology exists within D&D. So like, uh, I forget that they're an actual pantheon in yeah, D&D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck me. They, like, <sighs> exist. Uh, they are, they're, they're, they're around. They Nobody exist? uses them because it's lame to pick from an existing, D, like, pantheon. I don't but... think so. The Greek gods are fucking cool. Yeah, true. true Greek true. gods. I'm, honestly, the Hades fucking miniseries of Greek I was gods. Like, I just assume they all look like yeah, the Hades dope. versions of them because they look dope. Yeah, fair. That's a, that's fair. Uh, with that, um, nobody answered. So, was it Ethan that picked? Ethan, you can go with Yeah, now? yeah, Ethan yeah. picked it. Five uh, questions left. Monsters in the closet for 300. Monsters in the closet for 300. This creature has the ability to carry one large or up to four medium or smaller creatures in its body. In its in body. Its body. Mm -hmm. That could be so many different creatures. I mean, technically, if you eat them, you carry them. <laughs> but I'm assuming that this is like a specific thing. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like a, maybe it's some sort of construct, like creature I'm going to take a straight fucking guess. Okay. <laughs> What is gelatinous cube? Oh, that's a good correct. shout. Hey. What is a gelatinous cube? Yeah, correct. That's a good that shout. That wording is literally copy pasted from like its description. Yeah. Um, the other one I could have, the only one I think is maybe like, like water elementals. You can trap someone in your watery like body, mimic. but yeah. Look at, no, like, uh, gelatinous mimic. cubes have the ability to basically suffocate and carry around either one large creature or up to four medium or smaller creatures. Yeah. Well, that's like, a great way to go. Yeah. You're right? <clears throat> Die, death by jello. Uh, with that, Ethan is at 2,000 points, um, making him by far the number one. Uh, so on the I, unless he gets one of these wrong and then I get all three right, I can't beat him. But now we're just. Correct. I'm playing for second or third place at this point. Yeah, <laughs> and it's very fair. Uh, with that. Your other option, Laura, how many, how many minus was Duke? Like minus 28 or something, nine or some shit like that. I was like, going to say, very bad. the other option would have been to try and dump as many points as you can no. and go again. Not even possible no. anymore, I don't think. No. Yeah. You, you can uh. no longer be last. So there, there you know, there's that. Uh, there's that. that um, two categories left, Monsters in the Closet and Canonically in Canon. And for both these categories, only the four and 500 questions remain. Ethan, which one do you want to go through first? Let's save Canonically in Canon for last, because I think Laura's got a... Uh, I don't know, because it's not it's show bad. canon, is it? It's D and D canon. No, it's both D and D, &D are, canon. It's both of these are it. bad for you, aren't they? And I'm trying to be yeah. really nice. Now, um, never just do it. Just go <laughs> canonically in canon for 500. Canonically in I canon won't know for this 500. Either. This series of elven wars fought early in the history of Faerun took place over a period of 3,000 years and nearly led to destruction of the elven race. <laughs> Nothing. If I didn't care enough about this, I would buzz in and say Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <clears throat> uh, I can't name a single 20 seconds. War in D and D universe. I don't know enough about fucking Faerun. That's the problem. Fifteen I, seconds. I've read the books because I'm a nerd, but then I've never fucking played anything other than Homebrew. Ten room. seconds. Five. Nope. Four. <laughs> three. Two. One. I'm actually disappointed in this. I'm not. The I've said both of them. I'm not. The Crown D &D Wars. Universe. Never would have got that. Never heard go. of it. I mean, it's a 500 point question. It's meant to be hard. <laughs> yeah. All right, with that, uh, nobody answers. So, Ethan, you get to pick again. Canonically in canon for 400. Canonically in canon for 400. For this race to reproduce, they have to leave their home plane as time doesn't move. Fuck. Time doesn't move there. That means they're from the astral plane, but what race is from the astral plane? Do I want to risk it for the poor? Oh, I'm just thinking of the thing that's Who's in, in second right now? Role. Who's in second? I want, I Poliba? don't know if I want to risk it. 
I don't know if it's a thing. I think I know this, but I don't want to throw away like a good win. Five. To four. Be stupid. Three. Two. One. I'm not. I think it's actual. If it's actual dreadnought, I'm gonna I cry think it's again. Gith. Gith was. Oh, I the Gith. We even talked about it earlier. Fuck. I, okay, at least I'm it just, wasn't. I'm being conservative with points. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, with being that, a Ethan, pussy. Monster I just want to get one. I just want to get one of these to finish positive. Which one do you want to leave till last, Laura? I don't care. <laughs> Let's do Monster Hunter. I'm not being either of them. What was that? 400? 400. These creatures were known as protectors of forests and are mainly depicted as female. <laughs> Laura. What is a dryad? Or a nymph? Correct. <laughs> Hey. Hey. I have points! There you go! I, I thought, I thought the same that. thing and you beat me to it. Now the only thing is I can't answer this and be wrong because so then I go back to the negatives. But if I you mean, answer in, it yeah, at right... At this point right now you're in third place, which is solid. Hell yeah. <laughs> How many points does she need for second? Uh, I think she needs to answer this one correctly to be okay. shared second with Koiba, if I'm not mistaken. I'm only going to do it, though, if I'm 100% confident. I'm, I'm not, not too sure, it. though. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly check okay. the rankings after we're done here. Uh, final question. I'm going to read it for you. Illithid are known to put tadpoles in a variety of creatures to turn them into horrible monsters that they then enslave. This particular creature is the result of implanting a tadpole in a dragon. I have, a oh, I have guess. no idea. I have a guess, but I don't want to risk going negative again. No. You should know it because of the it. whole thing where they put them in gith and they put them in... They put them in fucking anything. Gith, dragon rider, dragons, and... I'm not doing uh, it. 15 I seconds. I'll, you, it'll come up and I'll hate myself, but I'm not... I know, same. 10 seconds. I should have gone for the Gith one. I'm, I'm trying to think of what are like tiny dragon-like creatures, four, and I'm only thinking three, of one. Two, but... No, one, it's, it's a big dragon. Just eats time. Oh, it's big, just gross. Good thing I wouldn't guess then. Brain sealer. Oh, dragon. thank God. Okay, thank God. I was not to gonna one. say that. And they that, literally give you a parasite that controls you. Yeah. With that, uh, we've come to the end of this round of Jeopardy, and the final score is 2,000 points for Ethan, putting in well at first place. And Laura with a f score of 400, which gets her in the positive and in the Yay! top three uh, so far. So with that, the final person that still has to play Jeopardy is Soko. Uh, and then Duke being last place gets a chance to redeem himself. So they'll be on the next discourse uh, after our holiday break. But uh, good job. You did well. You did well. I very good. Like I've I've got no shame in admitting that I played like a bitch towards the end because that's fine. <laughs> no, that's that's <laughs> like, fine. That's a legit reason, strategy, the only right? Duke like got so hilariously low was because he was like, I'm gonna buzz in for every question. I'm gonna buzz for every. I really question. hope that when Duke does it again, he doesn't do that because I want to see what he'd actually get. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, with that, we've come to the end of today's discourse as well. Um, a long one. As was, yeah, it was a long one. We had a lot of like good fucking questions to really go over and stuff. It was good. Um. As is custom, here on the Dungeon channel, I, as the DM, end off the Discord with a little teaser for what's to come. And because there's such a long break in between, oh um, boy. let's just say that... Um, Whoops, didn't mean to put that. This trial to get this final tier of Kosuth will put the other two things you've had to do to get a hand, of these tier, uh, get a hand on these tiers to fucking shame. Oh, good. Great. Oh, good. That's so there great. you go. <laughs> so with that, thank you all so much for watching. Happy holidays from all of us here at the uh, you know, Our... uh, at the Dungeon Select uh, crew of, of gamers. Um, we is really Profane live? I don't Profane, know. Daft, and he is. Profane, Daft, and Psalm are multi-streaming on Profane's channel playing the oh, Aliens yeah. Fire Team game. So we should host them. Absolutely. Absolutely we will. Yeah, they are. That's awesome. Uh, I just want to say a quick thanks from everyone at the uh, at the DS uh, crew here for the insane amount of support so far. Uh, the few months that we've been doing our thing on our channel, uh, past 200 followers, the, the viewer numbers are fucking nutty. Uh, the content being so like consistent is something I'm really proud of. Um, Say more consistent than any one of our individual channels. Literally, absolutely. Like anyone involved. We have not missed a dungeon slept yet. <laughs> this is the first time we're gonna miss. Out oh. on doing D&D on Sundays since we started, which is huge. Um, but that also makes it like a well-deserved break, you know what I mean? Because we've been consistent yeah, yeah. for like the past 18 sessions, with is which is like, what, 4, 8, 12? Over three months. Uh, almost four months. Uh, oh, oh, over four over months. Four, four months. Eight, it's a break. 16. Yeah. It's a break for you, who has to write shit. <clears throat> Meanwhile, as a player, I'm over here jonesing, man. <laughs> I have a one-shot to, to prepare, to so I'm happy for the yeah. break. Uh, join the Discord. 
join the Discord, guys. Follow us on Twitter, because those are the two main ways uh, to keep in touch with our scheduling over the holiday break. Um, it's going to be a good one. Hopefully, you guys all have a great Christmas or any other holiday, whichever one you celebrate this, around this time of year. Uh, Happy New Year and all that good stuff, and uh, we'll see you again when we see ya. But uh, as far as Campaign 2 goes, uh, Campaign 2 will continue the 16th, I believe, I think is so, a yeah. Sunday. Because it's the 9th yeah. plus 7 equals 16. Math checks out. There we go. Um, take care, everybody. Take care. Brush your hair. Uh, we're going to raid Profane Artillery real quick. Woo! Show him some love. Daddy level select himself. Uh, without him, yeah. no level select. And without no level select, uh, All we, wouldn't, the we wouldn't have had dungeon select. So technically, you can thank Profane for this team. existing. Because if he would have never pitched the idea of dungeon select to me, or uh, level select to me, this wouldn't have happened. Um, yeah. So yeah. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. Have great holidays. Happy holidays. Take care. Happy Chrysler. <laughs>